Hi, and welcome to episode 118 of C3 Crystals, Cauldrons, and Cocktails. I'm Ren. And I'm River. And today we will be talking about snow entities. Well, like deities yes. and fae and snow queens and, and more. And I was more. I was very confused. I know. When you suggested this one. I know. There and there's tons out there. There's so more, so more many. No, so so <laughs> many more. That's it. So much more. So much more than what we came up with. I didn't realize how encompassing this episode was. So we just picked some. Yes. Yes. So let's talk about it. Okay. So some belief systems incorporate spirits associated with winter and snow, and these spirits may be invoked or honored in snow magic rituals, like how we talked about before. Yes. So examples include folklore figures like Jack Frost or the winter goddess. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to talk about Jack Frost because I feel like... I feel like I mentioned this in our other so. episodes. I think we've talked about Jack Frost a little bit. But not but not, not in detail. Fully. And I feel like he's one that's forgotten about a lot. Because mm-hmm. you have like the main symbols of like, you know, Santa Claus, mm-hmm. you have Krampus that a lot of people know about. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know of Jack Frost, but you you don't think he's of not him. as prevalent. Yeah. Yes. So in Western folklore, Jack Frost is a mischievous sprite or spirit who person personifies winter's chill which i think is cool Mm -hmm. he is often depicted as an impish character responsible for creating frost patterns on windows and icing on surfaces i think that's cool because you Mm -hmm. know when you watch the the snow crystallize on the side of the windows that's jack frost supposedly supposedly Mm -hmm. and so jack frost is sometimes considered a playful yet elusive figure Mm -hmm. embodying the magical and frosty aspects of winter yeah and there's really not one particular story that we can pinpoint and say aha this is where jack frost came from Mm -hmm. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of stories from all over the world all different countries have some kind of snow sprite like this yes and in some cultures he's considered a villain in some he's a hero but in all of them, he is the personification of the winter season. Oh, my gosh. What? We didn't say what we were drinking. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> it's important, too, because it's yummy. We are drinking eggnog. I know it's kind of boring, but it's spiced eggnog with a little bit of I've spiced rum. Mm-hmm. And it's delicious. And we're together. We didn't. Mm-hmm. We didn't, We just jumped right into we the sure topic. Did. Yeah, we're together. <laughs> Although... We're huddled in my guest room. I, I hope that the sound sounds all right, because I feel like we're echoing all over the yeah, place. Yeah, we we weren't planning on recording over the holidays, and yet we were sick, and then oh, we yeah. go, oh I got my after gosh. She got sick. Yeah, we were like, we're running behind on an episode. We can't miss the last episode of the year. Yeah, I mean, especially after just boasting about it last week or the week before about, oh yeah, we've that's, done so well this year. That's we our haven't karma. missed a single episode, yep, and then we're like, our because oh, no. <laughs> i'm really not feeling great today although i must say the eggnog is helping it's very delicious but we i can't believe we forgot what we were drinking I and, we and the fact right that we're together yep i know yep. we're hardly ever together. yeah when was the last time we recorded together but yeah the guys are all in the other room watching football and so we're down here in this little guest room it literally in a corner in a corner <laughs> because i had it set up for one of my friends that came over for the holidays and i haven't put it all back together yet so we're sitting in this little tiny table like hunched yeah, over hunched together over, that's a good word. into this microphone that we don't even know if it's gonna sound great or not yeah we're so please bear with us okay but in Anyways. anyway so jack frost a lot of people think that he came from scandinavian or anglo-saxon tradi- traditions and one popular story, he's the son of Kerry, who is the Norse god of the wind, which makes mm-hmm, sense to mm-hmm. me. In Finnish folklore, there's the legend of Frost Man and Frost Woman who control weather and must keep good conditions for the reindeer to live in. Because they're mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. in Finland, that's reindeer are very important there, or they at least they were very important there. Mm-hmm. In Japanese folklore, there are stories of a frost man and his brother Mist Man. Ooh. Who are keepers of the frost and the dew? Ooh, Mist Man. Mist Man. <laughs> Sounds like we're getting into a Marvel comic uh-huh. book or something. <laughs> but as for the Jack Frost today, there isn't much reasoning as to why his name would be Jack. Like with the jack o' lanterns, it was Stingy Jack, oh. who was a real person that, mm-hmm. you know, that's where jack o' lanterns came from. 
but I don't know where Jack Frost, well, other than I Jack mean, was we, common. Yeah, we like the name Jack. Like uh, throughout history, we have like Jack the Ripper. We have who, I mean, there's a lot of Jacks in our history. Yeah. And Jack was actually a common slang word for man. Like, you know how we say, oh, oh man, okay, okay. it was, oh, Jack <laughs> in, <laughs> in England during the 16th and 17th centuries, apparently. Okay. So they say. So Jack Frost is often portrayed as a sprightly character. And then, of course, depending on where you're hearing about him, he's either a hero or a villain. Mm -hmm. And he's been the subject of many songs and stories and movies um, and DreamWorks. When they came out with Rise of the Guardians in 2012, there were some features of Jack Frost as the main protagonist, an angsty teenager who discovers his true purpose. Oh, well. Um, a teenager i can't see jock jack jock jack frost as, as an, an angsty, angsty teen. teenager i know but apparently i haven't gone to look at any of these although he's he's featured as a man in the santa claus three but he's evil in that movie yeah and, he is mm -hmm. and it's not a really good portrayal yeah he's trying to overthrow santa and all of that yeah um, and then let's not forget the actual movie jack frost which was a film about a father who dies in a car accident but magically comes back to life as a snowman to spend time with his son. And That's I kind of felt sad. like I watched that one and it was kind of creepy. Yeah, I can I'm not a fan of that idea. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't recall seeing that. I, I think I can picture the main character in that, the Jack Frost in that one. I, I can't remember the name of that actor. I don't think but I ever saw that one. Yeah. I think I would be traumatized. It it was kind of creepy. Hmm. Uh, what happened when it when it's when it was like it was not a whole anymore. thing of how he had to come to terms with you know it was making things right because he i think when he died it things were bad and he had never really given the time I to see. his son so okay. it was all of a a reconciliation and a closure type okay. thing okay that makes sense yeah then. so he's often depicted as a slim youthful elf like uh, with pale eyes maybe and I mean pale skin and silver hair and bright blue eyes or green eyes pale eyes <laughs> well you know I was thinking a lot of the portrayals have him having these ice blue eyeballs so pale eyeballs <laughs> pale eyeballs uh, sometimes he can be seen with icicles hanging off of him or icicle like features like a really pointy icicle nose or icicles hanging off of his nose he may be shown wearing a white or blue outfit, often with a hat or hood, and he may carry a staff or wand that he uses to create snow and ice. So what are his powers? So creating snow and ice are the biggest thing about what Jack Frost does. He's often depicted as having the ability to create, create snow and ice at will using his staff or wand to conjure winter weather. And did you know around 12% of the Earth's land surface is covered in snow and ice? That's a lot. Well, with uh, global warming, not so much. Anymore. I know. I wonder if that percentage is going down. <laughs> Probably. But I guess, you know, the North Pole and the Antarctica and the Arctic Area. is, areas are a lot of the Earth's, mm -hmm. you know, so I guess that's where guess the 12% comes yeah, from. Yeah. But like you said, it's a all melting. melting. Uh, controlling weather. In some versions of folklore, Jack Frost is said to have control over the weather, including the ability to bring snowstorms or blizzards, Ooh. freezing objects or people. He is sometimes depicted as having the power to freeze objects or people with a touch, turning them into ice sculptures. Now that seems like it would Ooh, be that an seems evil so thing. Cool. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's evil. And you're like, oh, that's cool. You know, like the sculptures that they make, uh, like the marble ones that are like mm -hmm. so uh, detailed and mm -hmm. it looks like it could just be a person like maybe it plastered was. over sea. And then so that gives me mm -hmm. those vibes. And I think that's cool, but not, not cool for that person. But yeah, not not the dead person there's a lot of stories where there are statues that were actually people turned into statues mm -hmm. by whoever the antagonist is mm -hmm. in, in the story yeah and that they can sometimes be turned back to humans mm, in, yeah. in the folklore in the folklore yeah. but i feel like if it was done in real life like a human made into a statue yeah i don't see how you could come. undo that no yeah because even you know i always think about how you know how they find the um frozen mammoths and things that oh, froze yeah. immediately and they yeah. still have the digesting food in their yeah. stomach and i'm like you know if they froze that fat that fast why can't they 
be brought back to life. Yeah, I don't. But they're in any way to do yeah, that. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. No. Like, you know, like movies and everything were like, oh, they this ancient civilization was frozen for thousands of years and we were able to thaw them out and, and bring them bring back, them back because it, they preserved perfectly. But it doesn't it doesn't make sense. And no. any like it sounds cool. Like, it is sure, cool. Like but like they didn't eat. They their heart stopped. Like mm-hmm. the, the, the blood like solidified. It's, like yeah so, there's no way to anyways <laughs> uh, supposedly he also has the power to move through snow and ice and they they say that he can move through snow and ice with ease or he may actually be shown as like ice skating or sledding on the ice as depictions of him another one of his abilities is bringing joy and wonder you know how in the at least in the beginning of the winter snow is so magical and everybody yes. loves it in the beginning. well we don't have that yet no we we don't get that <laughs> no but that feeling that comes with that first snowfall is supposed to be jack frost bringing you that joy okay okay um it helps uh in, inspire everybody not just kids but adults too to mm-hmm. embrace the joys of winter yes yes So that was what I found on Jack Frost or what we found on Jack Frost. Mm -hmm. And then since we were talking about winter court, winter um, fairies, there is the idea of the fae having their courts. Yes. And there's all kinds of folklore and legends about this and they're Mm -hmm. not all the same. I tend to get confused. There's a lot. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of like separate, there's a lot. And then (laughs) there's a lot of, books like fantasy novels out there that have twisted what mm-hmm. is that you know and so half the time I don't know if I was I'm remembering something from That's a really fantasy like novel or, or from the legends that actually were handed down yeah but there are many versions but the one that I go with is the Seely Courts and the Unseely Courts mm-hmm. and Queen Mab is or was the queen of the winter court of the Unseely Court and the winter court re- represents what people see as the malevolent side of the fae. They're, they don't like humans. They're not evil, so to speak. They just don't think of humans as being worthy creatures to, you know, how like we think of bugs. Ants. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, they're in the way. Let's move them out of the way. Or let's pour boiling hot water into their <laughs> ant houses to get rid of them. That's just yeah, awful. That's, that's kind of. That's awful that's how the unseelie court see humans but they are considered more cruel than the summer court although the summer court has its moments as well they're they can be just as we'll have cruel. to do an episode mm-hmm. during the summer because i don't think we've talked much about the, the fake yeah. courts yeah. It be, it's because there's so many different ways so to go about talking about and, them yeah okay. some people believe one you know like the feely seely the feely courts the seely courts <laughs> And the unseely courts and other people don't think that way. Yeah. Um, but the winter court has free reign over the winter solstice and the autumn equinox months. And that's when they're the strongest. Okay. And they are sensible, chilled, dark, baleful, and cold. They are the epitome of winter. And the fey courts are often depicted, as we said, in these fantasy novels. Like one that really makes me think of the fey court and the winter is the um the grave witch series uh Kal- never, kalina price i think is the I one i never that saw it. any of those and she has a whole series and and the main character has to deal with the fae over time and they're not nice creatures sometimes mm-hmm. um and then there's also the series by karen monning the fey fever series oh, i've never so read fantastic those books are seen. and that story is about the fae coming into our world so it you know as normal humans having to suddenly deal with the appearance of fae in our world and what would that look like yeah excellent excellent i've never never i don't know i'm like i always say i'm not much of a reader (laughs) yeah i I listen to the audiobook so if it was on (laughs) audiobook then maybe yeah you might Mm -hmm. ought to find time to try to read some of these they're they're excellent excellent stories i would like them i just need to be into that mindset Mm -hmm. and like start listening Mm -hmm. well (laughs) i know right now you're still trying to get a job and i don't want to talk about it it. (laughs) but there are a lot of stories about the fey courts and the different queens that go with the fey courts the summer courts Mm -hmm. the summer and winter are generally the main 
quartz and then the spring and fall are supposed supposedly lesser quartz but in some okay, books I've they're all that. equally st as strong as the other but mm -hmm. from what I have learned if I don't you know I say I learned it but what Seen, I have like heard red, yeah. is that the summer and winter are really the strongest quartz of all mm -hmm. and the winter court queen is queen mab so that's the fae well like you said we could do another episode i think we should i think we should break them down and go per season so like into when as we move into the spring season we should talk about the spring quartz okay, and that then sounds summer. good mm -hmm. i like that idea we remember to do that <laughs> you all can remind us yes okay so now i kind of wanted to talk a little bit about father frost okay it is a Russian folklore oh. um, that is, he is called Dead Moros, or however, however, you, well, say however you say that in Russian. Also, That's known Russian as, yes, yeah. also known as Father Frost. And he is a winter spirit associated with the holiday season. Okay. He is often depicted as a frosty elderly man with a long white beard wearing a blue or silver coat. <laughs> Interesting. And to me, he sounds, it sounds like a wizard, you know, like how mm -hmm. we have like the, you know, the, the blue hooded, um, the elderly man the, and like the mm -hmm. stars on the cloak. Mm -hmm. That's what I pictured I when I read that. that. Mm -hmm. But Father Frost is said to bring winter gifts to children during the New Year celebration. And he is equivalent to our Santa Claus. Except for he comes during the New Year. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we should have talked about him while we were talking about like Krampus. Yeah, and we should have. We were, what were we talking about? What are other episodes? I didn't I even know about him then. I know, I'm me just either. now learning about and him. And so when I was when I was researching all of these, you know, winter deities, deities mm -hmm. he is his name popped up, Father Frost, and I was like, oh, that's going to be similar to Jack Frost. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's more similar to our Santa Claus. Yeah, he's a winter deity as opposed to, yeah. a, you know, Jack Frost is kind of a a legend or mm -hmm. a folk tale. Would you say our Santa Claus is a deity since he's basically worshipped by children? Could be, especially <laughs> with uh, the tulpa yeah, thing exactly. going on out yeah. there. Yeah. But he is associated with frost and snow. And the idea that he is, that they intertwined with him as the gift giver who brings abundance and blessings during the winter season. Because think about it, in the, in the olden days, winter times were rough you mm -hmm. you had to hope that your stores that you had saved up from the harvests would yeah, last no. you through yeah. that time and so the idea of a deity who brings abundance and blessings during that time yeah. would be a wonderful deity to to worship or whatever yeah um the russian fairy tales often talk about him as being this wise and mysterious being with magical powers and he supposedly has the ability to grant wishes, predict the future, confer blessings upon those he deems worthy. So kind of an all-powerful, hoped-for creature during the bleak time of year. Mm -hmm. So what else does he look like? He is one of the most recognizable features is that long white beard that you talked about. And the long white beard symbolizes wisdom and age. And it represents his role as an elderly figure, just like you said. Mm -hmm. And he guides and brings joy to children and families. And he is also often depicted as wearing flowing tunics in the shades oh. of blue and white. Okay. Like you were talking about his cloak. Um, yeah. See, uh, yeah. I thought I I thought about him as wearing like a cloak, but he mm -hmm. also could remind me of like Gandalf or mm -hmm. Dumbledore or mm -hmm. some oh, sort yeah. of figure like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And the blue color represents the cold winter season. White represents purity and the snow-covered landscapes. And this attire that they associate with him um, enforces reinforces the thought that he is part of the winter festival and he's very culturally significant in the snowy Russian winters, which I think it's really, really cold there. Mm -hmm. Um, and his granddaughter was said to be the snow maiden, which I think you're going to talk about in a minute. But Father Frost is typically depicted as traveling in a sleigh pulled by three steel horses, oh. symbolizing power and strength. I didn't know anything about the steel horses. How I, do they fly if they're steel? Don't know. <laughs> Magic. Yeah. Well, and it doesn't say he flies. It just says oh, he travels. Maybe he traveling just... in a sleigh. Yeah. 
but if they're steel they'd be really heavy yeah although they wouldn't get cold that's true that's true that's true i mean they would feel cold to us but they mm -hmm. would themselves wouldn't be cold would they i don't know okay <laughs> <laughs> would would the horses be able to feel the cold i don't know like even if they're steel they still feel i read steel a series cold. called the iron fay an excellent series it's it's more of a young adult but i like all fantasy movies i said uh, it's a book it's a series of books but the iron fay because normally you hear that the fay don't like iron that it's you know dangerous to them mm -hmm. or even ghosts don't like iron and metal certain metals so interesting that he would have a steel horse i guess he's not fay mm -hmm. i don't know don't know weird steel feel steel cold horses yeah anyways i don't know i so, want one uh, you always <laughs> want them i want everything you want everything <laughs> so as you were saying like uh there's now a snow maiden mm -hmm. or called an ice maiden within like the rust russian culture but mm -hmm. it's also in other cultures as well yes so the Ice Maiden is a mythical figure associated with the cold and frozen aspects of the winter. She may be a guardian sprite of ice landscapes embodying the beauty and harshness of the winter season. That's <laughs> true because, you know, and I think the winter court in the Fae is the same way. There's this beauty, but it also ha is very harsh and cold and... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know but but it is a beauty there is yes. that beauty to it yes she is she is often portrayed as a beautiful young woman with okay. like this long flowing hair and i don't know what color i was gonna say i wonder if it's white hair it could be that could would be, be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she's also dressed in blue or white and mm -hmm. like that i mean i understand that because of the colors with winter mm -hmm. and then the snow maiden she also represents the fleeting beauty of the magic of winter mm -hmm. and she brings joy and companionship to father frost emphasizing the importance of family bonds and the joy of shared celebrations during the winter season oh i like yeah. that because like yeah that he's one. her granddaddy yeah so really like that's wholesome mm -hmm. i like that makes me wonder where like like since that's her grandfather who the parents are yeah what happened to them in between they said no nah, i'm not for the magic life <laughs> we're gonna go do yeah. summer things we're gonna yeah. be at the beach we'll call y'all later <laughs> but yeah so to today and i guess all together not today all together uh they embody the spirit of winter festivities and joy and mostly the joy of giving and mm -hmm. receiving a little less and receiving family. but yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the next one I came across was Odin as being a deity of the winter. He has been a part of winter festivities since long before Santa Claus was ever a thing. Boo, Santa. Well, we love Santa too. Maybe he's Faye. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> that would that would explain all the little elves. I kind of think he might be Tulpa. Well, it would explain mm -hmm. the elves. You're right. Mm -hmm. That's, he, that's he true. Yes. That's true. Mm -hmm. So Odin flies, and we've talked about this before. He flies on his trusty eight-legged steed, Sleepnir, and he slips down chimneys and gives candies and gifts to the children. And in Germanic lore, um, he also led the wild hunt, which we talked a little bit about, I think, last week. I can't remember. I can't remember. And the wild hunt is the, the hunt that collects lost souls and sometimes a person joined the wild hunt in their sleep via astral projection, Ooh, which is the coolest thing. I've cool. heard of that a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. I've heard of real people today saying that they feel like in their sleep, they ended up somehow connected to the wild hunt. Oh, wow. In Nordic countries, the people gave sacrifices to Odin in the winter months to ensure safety and prosperity. That was a common thing. Oh, yeah, I heard that the wild hunt is a like a spectral pr procession led by supernatural figures often associated with winter or death. Yeah, a lot. I can see death being associated yes. with it. Yes. Which the, winter was equivalent to yeah, death. Yeah, because I mean, with lot. the hunt being in the winter months and it's it's kind of considered an omen of significant events. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. I've heard that too. Mm -hmm. And but I also saw that the leader of the wild hunt varies across traditions mm. too. That makes sense. That's another, the wild hunt is another 
legend that has been incorporated into movies and books and that kind of mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. See, I haven't heard much about the wild hunt until doing some of this mm-hmm. research because, I mean, I don't know. I just, I don't know why I haven't heard much There's of it. There's so much we don't know out there. I mean, I I know, I kind of had the understanding of what it was, but yeah. I don't know anything the else. The details. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think we could probably do a whole episode on just the wild We hunt. always say that. I know. I mean, we could and do a we whole episode. And then we never remember to do it. We're like, oh, that's such a good idea. We never write never it down. Never write it down. And then we never do it. But Odin was the great magician among the gods and was associated with runes. You know how we have the Viking runes? Odin, yes, Odin yes. is the one that's associated with that. And he's also, just FYI, the god of poets. Oh. Which Jennifer, uh, Jessica, Jesus, mm-hmm. Jessica, one of Je- our- What did you just say? I said Jennifer. We have a Jennifer too, but I was thinking about Jessica who has written poems. Wow. I was going to make a joke about how she's our oldest and now patron I'm, I'm... and now her name is Jennifer. <laughs> our oldest patron now named Jennifer. <laughs> Sorry, Jessica. <laughs> but her husband mentioned that she has had two poems published. So that's very oh, cool. Oh, that's really awesome. I, I remember reading it. I know you did most of everything, mm-hmm. um, but that, I think that's just awesome. And so, yeah, she might be interested in looking into Odin as he is the god of poets. So mm-hmm. I think that's kind of mm-hmm. cool. Okay. Okay. On to next? the next one. So this one I will not pronounce correctly. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you that now. So Yuki Ona mm-hmm. is a Japanese folklore, or uh, there it can also be called Snow Woman. Snow Woman. Okay. So the Snow Woman is a sprite or spirit associated with snowstorms. Oh. She is often uh, depicted as a beautiful woman in a white kimono capable of manipulating the snow and ice. Okay. So Yuki Ona, or the Snow Woman, may be portrayed as both benevolent and malevolent, sometimes helping or harming travelers caught in snowstorms. That's crazy. In in a bunch of stories, she's portrayed as as malevolent. Yes. um, Seeking to harm anybody she comes across. Mm -hmm. But the origin of Yuki Ona, I'm sorry, differs from place to place, but she's generally believed to be born out of tales of grief and sorrow, and she nearly always meets her end by melting or disintegrating into nothingness after coming into contact with unfavorable heat conditions. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. That's the way that you would uh, beat her. What does she look like? Beat her. Yeah. Bah, bah, bah. (laughs) Uh, She is extremely pale. And her skin is almost blue. You know how when you yes, get so cold, definitely. your skin almost turns blue? Yeah. And that signifies her cold nature. And some tales even describe her skin as being transparent, which when I think of transparent, I'm thinking you can see the brain inside and oh, the heart. That's I was thinking ghost. Oh, like it through that oh. yeah, that makes more sense. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Okay. Transparent. You can see the brains and I'm like, skin. Okay. Ghosts are transparent. <laughs> even think about that okay moving on okay okay um so this allows her to blend into the icy environment see how that makes much more sense that she's see-through not because if you had a red brain sticking out that would be pretty obvious against white in the background okay Uh uh-huh so (laughs) it would just be like a floating brain you'd be like what the fuck is that you're trying to squint and go what heart floating yeah like (laughs) what is that like if you don't have your glasses on you don't know what the heck is coming at you that would be very scary okay great (laughs) um she has a pretty face which i guess if she were transparent you wouldn't be able to see only see the red brains Framed by long jet black hair that provides a jarring contrast to the hue of her skin. Her height is uh, often disputed depending on where you hear about her from. Mm -hmm. Um, But more often than not, though, her height is described as taller than the average female. Okay, but define tall because I'm apparently taller than the average female. You are pretty tall. I am tall. One of my friends, she's, she's a short person and she says she is average height. I know she you're talking about five foot four. I know who you're talking about. And we always have this conversation because I am much taller than she is. Mm-hmm. And she always com- she always says something about my height. And I always say something about her shortness. And she's like, Well, I'm average height. And I'm like, No, you're not. You are literally not. I don't, I don't think five four is average. You I are really short. think that's short. 
but Yukiana typically wears white clothing, which is a, seems to be common among these spirits yeah, in the winter. They wear like, white, it is white or blue. With white, like snow. But she is believed to sometimes wear deep red kimonos in order to mask the blood of her victims. I don't think so. I think that's her brain. <laughs> she has to have something match the brain that's floating out there. <laughs> Oh man, I'm I'm questioning how your brain works right now. <laughs> Apparently it doesn't at all, right? <laughs> Anyways. Moving on. Um in Norse mythology, I am not gonna pronounce this right. Skadi or Skadi, I believe Skadi, it is Skadi. S-K-A-D-I. I think so. Is a giantess associated with skiing, hunting, and winter, mm. which is a giant S. I've never really re- i don't you know, know anything you play world of warcraft because we play together sometimes yeah. so do you remember those giant women things that oh, were in this yes. yes they were scotty oh yes. okay see i just play video games to play them and have fun i don't know much there's lo- usually <laughs> video games there is a whole i know there's legend a whole behind. backstory there there is. everything into it and i'm just so lazy to read into but they usually get those ideas from actual legends yes that are out yes. there which is okay, so cool okay. so anyway yeah she's actually a goddess a goddess of winter and the act of of skiing and hunting um, help illustrate her as this fierce goddess that is self-reliant. She kind of personifies the untamed and wild forces of nature. Okay. And her uh, her personality is one of might and resilience inherent that's inherent in nature as well, as well as the ferocious determination uh, that are characteristics of women everywhere. I, I feel like we a lot of times have to be steadfast and uh, mighty mm-hmm. sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, she embodies the raw spirit of winter and the unbridled elements of the natural world. As the goddess presiding over hunting and skiing, she serves as a symbol of the deep-rooted connection between humanity and the wilderness, as well as the nece- necessity to adapt and survive within harsh and unforgiving environments. So she might be a goddess that you might want to try to work with if mm-hmm. you feel like any of that re- um, relates to you. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then the next one, and this is also not going to be pronounced correctly, um, Kaliach. Yeah. Um, she is also known as Biera, Queen of Winter. She is an ancient divine ancestor of the Irish and Scottish Celtic people. Mm-hmm. And her name literally means old woman or hag. Wow. I know, right? That's not what I was thinking, but okay. But, you know, hag back then, I don't think was Bad? A, a detrimental okay. term. Uh, it kind of meant old wise woman okay. back then. Mm-hmm. It is said that she brings winter to Scotland, Ireland, and the Isle of Man. She rules the land during the winter months while Bridget rules during the summer months. Sometimes known as the Veiled One or the Queen of Winter, she uh, determined the winter's length and harshness. So I guess they would probably make sacrifices to her, too, to try to get winter to end sooner. Okay. She appears primarily as a veiled old woman, sometimes with only one eye. Okay. And her skin was deathly pale or blue, while her teeth were red. Here's that red again. And her clothes adorned with skulls. She would leap across mountains and ride storms. Oh, that sounds fun. That does sound fun. Neither fully good nor fully evil, her intentions are varied. She is a natural and wild destructive force. But despite this, she cares deeply for animals, both wild and domestic, during the dark winter months. Sounds like me. (laughs) I know. I love animals. Me too. In all three Gaelic-speaking regions, she was the patron of wolves, embodied by winter hunger. In Scotland, she also served as a deer herder. She's kind of the precursor to our Groundhog Day because on Imbolc or February 1st of each year, she runs out of firewood for the winter. So she has to collect more firewood on Imbolc. And if she wishes for winter to last longer, she makes the day sunny and bright so that she can find lots of wood to bring back. Mm -hmm. And if she accidentally oversleeps and the day is stormy and gray, then that means winter is going to be shorter that year. So kind of like our groundhog. Interesting. 
So that that's really the ones that we chose to talk about for this yes, episode. There yes. are tons yeah, out there. So we had many. no idea. Yes, these were the fun. These fun, were fun. Fun ones yeah. to begin to start with. Yeah. So if you all have any that you work with or that you want us to talk about because you're interested in working mm-hmm. with them, let us know and we will do the research for yes. you and put it together in this lovely, wonderful, informative manner. <laughs> That we always do. We're always a chaotic mess. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> oh, so thank you for listening. I forgot to do the outro and we're not in our normal place. So okay. You can't pull it up. It's fine. Uh, I can try to remember. Okay. I always mess it up anyways. Okay. So uh, you can find us at www.c3witchypodcast.com. There you will find links to all of our, all of our Everything. platforms that you can listen to our wow look at me i told you i was gonna mess it up uh there's but are they to- pale-eyed <sighs> are they red brain are they red brain <laughs> well, uh, anyway anyway <laughs> you can find links to all of our social medias you can li- find links to all of our episodes we have them all linked underneath our episode descriptions mm-hmm. which are sometimes not updated um and it has links to our like where you can listen to us on Buzzsprout, sprout iheart radio mm-hmm. anywhere you get podcasts we have pretty much all the links there you have links to our merch but if you don't want to go to our original website you can go to www.c3witchypodcastmerch.com mm-hmm. and there you can shop our merch it's limited edition for this season mm-hmm. I don't know when we're going to be taking yeah. it down. I mean, some of it had Yule specific items, um, but so we'll be switching it out before too long, probably. Mm-hmm. So shop while it lasts. Mm-hmm. And you can also find our descriptions and understandings of our subscriptions. <laughs> I was going to say of our Buzzsprout <laughs> subscriptions and our Patreon. I was going to try to yeah, mash the two together. If you do, if you get... If you support us, <laughs> wow, we're struggling when we don't have it written down. When you support us, you do get access to different things. If you support us through Buzzsprout, you get access to our other podcast, which is C3 with uh, three, C3 <laughs> Crystals, Cauldrons, and Cocktails After Dark. Uh-huh. Uh, you get that also on Patreon, but it, Patreon also gives you a whole bunch more. Yeah, the, um, Ren does these meditations on there. Mm-hmm. I do coloring pages. Mm-hmm. There's to-do lists, anything that you, especially now that it's coming to the new year. Yes. It might be a good time to want to look at some of those to-do lists. Mm-hmm. Wow. Look at us. We're ending our episodes as usual at the end of the year. At the end of the year. <laughs> but, uh, well, thank, thanks thank for, you listening. for listening. Yeah. And, uh, we'll be back. We'll be back. And until then, we'll see you next year. <laughs> we'll see you next year. And until then, stay witchy. Woo!